Hey, what's up, world, and welcome to the 58th edition of the Take One Podcast, and I'd like to thank you guys for joining me, and on this episode, I'm going to be getting into a few new trailers that dropped recently, as well as I'm going to be doing a whole box office thing, as you know, uh... And yeah, that's really about it. That should fill up this podcast and all that stuff. But um, actually, some significant trailers did drop uh, like last week. So I'm going to go ahead and without further ado, go and get into that. So the first one that I am going to be getting into is the Deadpool 2 trailer, which I guess this was count as the first official trailer, I guess you could say. In a sense, because it's still kind of like the old, oh, it's still kind of like the other one. The other one was really a teaser. So, I don't know if you could really count this as a first full-on trailer because it still kind of had the same thing where you got some action, but then you got some kind of comedy shtick that uh, Deadpool is doing. But this one shows a little bit more action. This one is called uh, Meet Cable because it starts off with the character Cable played by uh, Josh Brolin. And uh, he actually looks pretty good in the role, pretty damn good. Um, they start off with him and, you know, you see his eye and you got Deadpool interrupting the scene because he, on his arm, it's supposed to be a uh, metal robot type arm, but it's the scene is basically showing it before all the CG is placed on the, um, on the green arm or whatever, because you know, uh, as you guys know, if you guys don't know, you know, when they're doing like, uh, basically cg on a person they'll have the the green kind of sleeve or green whatever across that uh body part that way they can put it they can add it on later in you know uh in like post or whatever and uh make it looks make it look realistic with the cg and all that stuff so he had the green sleeve on it wasn't done so deadpool cut to him playing with toys acting out a scene or whatever and he acting like he's sheriff woody from um toy story and then he he <laughs> it's, it was actually pretty funny because when he cut the scene he says what in the holy hell and it was just I, I can't do it justice i can't do it justice if you've seen the trailer you know what it is uh it's pretty entertaining i didn't really enjoy the other trailer that did it but this one did it a little bit better and i got a little bit more enjoyment out of it and so once he um playing with the toys you got him to basically oh yeah oh you're done that was unrealistically uh fast and so he cuts to you know the scenes from the trailer from the actual trailer uh actual scenes of the movie and it looks pretty badass you got cable doing his thing you got deadpool doing his thing you got uh negasonic teenage warhead doing her thing i didn't see colossus up in here i'm i could have i'm pretty sure that he's in this movie if i'm not mistaken i probably could be mistaken i have to look it up but i'm pretty sure that he's in this movie but i didn't see him but you got uh domino she's in the trailer and you got like a few more characters more than likely some of the characters is going to be up in the x-force movie that fox has on, on his slate to you know uh basically throw out there within the next coming year or years or whatever but it looks pretty badass it looks like a little bit more money has gone into the budget i don't know what the synopsis is out they probably could have the synopsis out already but uh it looks pretty badass like i i have to say um this after seeing the first film the first film was okay for me I wasn't over the hills like like uh, everyone else was. Everyone, oh my God, it's so good. And they're still raving about it now. And I could see why. You know, I understand why. I'm not, you know, going against them and saying like, I don't understand why you feel this way, blah, blah. It was like, it was okay for me. You know, certain scenes, you know, certain things didn't work in the first film for me. And certain things worked really well. So I was just kind of like, I guess you could say in a lower minority of that it was just okay you know it wasn't all that but this one looks like it may it is going to kick it up a notch it looks like i'm going to find more enjoyment out of this movie than i did in the first one and i can't wait till this movie comes out because i am going to go see it uh and most definitely it comes out a couple weeks after infinity war so that's something to look forward to and um yeah that's all i really gotta say about this uh trailer so uh let's go ahead and move on to the next one so the new trailer to the new sony marvel marvel sony however you want to put it 
movie Venom dropped with Tom Hardy playing Brock. Uh, damn, what's his last name? God dang it. Eddie Brock. That is his last name. Eddie Brock. Uh, portraying Venom up in this new uh, movie and um, I want to say that I am really underwhelmed this came on and I'm thinking like it's about to show some crazy stuff like I didn't expect it to be like go all balls out or whatever because they don't need to do that right off the hand it just needs to let them know that like okay we made this movie it's here check it out you know we're, we're letting you guys know that this is coming out that's all you have to do. That's all you got to do. And I, I'm looking at the trailer. I'm like, okay, okay. We're going to start getting to the good part. And then we get all the way through the trailer. And I'm like, yeah, where is Venom? <laughs> you know, um, just I, I, I don't understand this. Okay, so uh, I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm on the fence about this. Not, well, I ain't even going to say I'm on the fence. I did not like this trailer. I did not. It was a decent trailer, but you, why are you going to have a movie called Venom without, let me say, having uh, Venom in the trailer? Um, and, I, and I get, that was a lot of people's gripe. There's a lot of people that love this trailer, a lot of people that like it, whatever. But I look at it from this standpoint. Okay, so it's a lot of people that go out and watch comic book movies. Even before it was a big Marvel thing where every year we get like 10 comic book movies. Before all this, let's say go back to the Sam Raimi, you know, era of Spider-Man. You got the X-Men movies where it was just, okay, we're going to do ones, two, threes, and blah, blah, blah. And there's no connective universe where you got... X-Men, you got these characters over here and these characters are going to come together into the whole thing. It's just flat out, you're going to have a one movie that's successful, let's do a second one. That's successful, let's do a third. You know, and go on from there. When people go to see these movies, even now, you know, just regular moviegoers, it's like they know these characters. A lot of characters they don't know, so they look forward to these movies to give them the knowledge the only the reason why i bring up the sam raimi spider-mans and that's the ones with toby mcguire basically the first spider-man movies that was uh brought to the big screen uh is because the third one had venom in it and that was i guess you could say a lot of people's introduction to the character venom because before then i guarantee you like a lot of the general audience didn't know who the hell venom was that was their first time seeing it and from then, that's probably was the only time seeing Venom in the live action because we haven't had a Venom character since. Um, and so, when you're putting out a project of that stature, I know, and a lot of people that, you know, read the comic books or watch the cartoons and, you know, are fans of Marvel and stuff and Spider-Man, and, you know, real, real big fans, they know who Venom is. But guaranteed, there are going to be a lot of people that don't, know who venom is that might go with their boyfriend or girlfriend or their friends or family or whatever and they don't know who the hell venom is when you're looking at this movie i don't know if they're really trying to go for like making it separate from making it look like a comic book movie this trailer makes it look like it's a straight horror film which you know i have no problem with but it look makes it look like it's just a regular horror film you know, you get what I'm saying? You get what I'm going with it? If you're making a movie about a villain that is connected to Spider-Man, you know, you want to have a look at that, you know, character. You want to know that. This movie with, with this trailer, with the lack of the symbiote that is Venom, it's kind of lackluster. You know, they want to know what Venom looks like. You know, this just shows that it looks just like a regular film. And it's not. It's a superhero type film. It's connected to a superhero universe. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure if it is connected to the MCU. But if we have the Tom Holland Spider-Man in it, then yes, it is connected to the MCU. So it's connected to the Iron Man and the Avengers and all that stuff that we have going in, you know, Marvel Studios. Uh, and this is a totally different company, but still connected through the Tom Holland Spider-Man, which does appear in the MCU. And it's like, 
you want to let the general audience know that this is that type of movie. Because someone could look at this and be like, oh, this is a new horror film. I'm, I might go check this out. And they don't have no idea that it's connected to a superhero movie. So, you know, or superhero universe. So you want to let your audience know, you know, uh, <laughs> you know that this is what it is. Because they're going to look at this and think that it's a horror film. And... It's cool if it is, but also let them know what it truly is at heart, which is a superhero film. I don't know if you can connect, well, like basically classify it as that, but it's a connected to the superhero universe. Like let people know all we have so far is some goo moving in the tube and then the black stuff moving up Tom Hardy's uh, neck as he's screaming towards the end of the um thing. And then you get the... The, the venom signature look or whatever with the eyes and then the mouth but other than that it's like you should have shown at least like a dark figure of venom or something like that or you should have so show something to venom now given they probably don't have a lot of the cg and all that stuff rendered to where it looks actually pretty good which is okay but if you're going to show that you know, wait. I mean, we can wait as fans. There's a lot of people that really want to see these movies. We can wait to see, you know, the the uh, a better looking product. If you're not, if the CG isn't ready for the overall look of Venom, we can wait on that. Like seriously. But to have no Venom in the in the in the Venom, you know, uh, trailer. That's kind of like advertising. The Avengers movie and not having none of the Avengers in the trailer. You know, you get what I'm saying? You know, uh, just kind of like having Iron Man trailer uh, or Black, Plan Black, Black Panther having his first trailer. But he's not in the trailer or he's not in his suit. He's just regular, you know, T'Challa. You know? No mention, no real men, no mention of Black Panther. Not not the name or nothing. It's just T'Challa, just how he is, just regular. And you have no scenes of Black Panther, him in a suit, and all that stuff. Just just imagine what people are gonna think. You know, it's it's like you have to have something. And if everything isn't ready, don't put out the trailer. Don't put out the trailer. This trailer, it was, to me, it was just trash. It was just trash. I did not like it. I felt like they should have had Venom in there just for the general audience who don't know who Venom is. You know? And probably forgot ever since the Sam Raimi third Spider-Man movie. It's like you need to have that introduction. If you're going to put out a trailer, have Venom in it. Because other than that, it's like people are going to get the wrong impressions from this trailer. And then when they see this trailer again, if they have no one around there, them to basically explain that this is a Spider-Man villain and that it is connected to Spider-Man, they're going to be looking at the second or the next trailer like, oh, okay, duh, duh, duh. and then you see this thing, you're going to be like, oh, what the heck? You know, they're going to be thrown off. You know, you gave them one thing in one trailer and you're going to give them another thing in another trailer. So it's just, I, I just, I didn't like it. It was so, it was disappointing. Uh, it was very, very disappointing. Um, but that's not saying that I am not excited to see the movie. I am definitely going to go check it out just to see what they're working with, what they're going to do with this character, if they're going to make him an anti-hero or what, whatever they're going to do with him. I don't know. But I mean, I'm very interested. It looks like it could be a great film. I don't know. But I am going to go see it. It's just the trailer that I'm talking about right now is trash. I just did not like it. I didn't like the fact that they didn't include the um, look of Venom in the trailer. Just the lack of Venom. It's cool you had Eddie Brock up in there. Cool. I introduced him within, you know, the beginning. But toward the end, you should have ended off with the last shot being Venom. Not just a little, uh, you know illustration of uh you know just the eyes and stuff like like that's nothing that's nothing you're giving us nothing so i don't know it's just i really really did not like it as you can tell but uh yeah and that's really all i have to say about that uh piece of shit trailer uh, I, I ain't even gonna go that far it just was not a good trailer but um any case uh let's move on to the next one 
And the last and final trailer that I will be talking about uh, for this segment is the new Jessica Jones season two trailer that dropped. And um, yeah, this trailer is actually pretty good. I like this one better than the last one. Uh, this this uh, show is uh, coming out next month. It's actually not that far away. Just a few weeks and I can't wait. Uh, this trailer has a lot in it. It has basically the gist that I get from it is that she's trying to find out more about her past how she came to be why she came to be and all that stuff and she's trying to put the clues together so i feel like that's going to be the big main story for this trailer uh, i don't know who is the main villain but we do get at the end that uh Kilgrave is there uh, if you guys don't know i haven't done my review on the first season of jessica jones uh, I'm actually slacking on that. Uh, so a lot of the Netflix uh, MCU movie, well, shows that I haven't done reviews on. And uh, one of the things that I did notice, um, for those who watch Jessica Jones and don't know too much about her, uh, one of the things that I do know is um, kind of the villain, uh, Kilgrave, which in the comic books, he's known as the Purple Man. So if you notice in the whole season of Jessica Jones, I don't know if a lot of, well, I know a lot of people have, but if you don't keep up with the comic books or know anything about, you know, these characters beyond the show, in the comic book, the purple man, his skin is purple, he's wearing purple suits and all that stuff. That's why in the um in the show he's wearing purple. And so uh all through out the first season, you see a lot of purple. You will see somebody wearing a purple um uh, shirt or purple pants or purple shoes or something like that you'll see purple lighting you'll see purple all throughout the season and it was just a lot of it was right there but a lot of it was just kind of like just off in the thing to where it's like if you don't really pay attention you won't notice it but i noticed it all throughout the season every single episode had that and so that's why at the end of this trailer you got you know the clapping the hands clapping or whatever you don't see who's clapping but you see a purple light all on Jessica. And that just right there let me know that that's Kilgrave because they had that little thing that uh, the purple man, Kilgrave, is something that accompanies with him. And so I'm like, okay, uh, I thought he died in the first season. So I don't know. Uh, but in any case, um, yeah, this... Just the overall, the rest of the trailer looks pretty damn good. Um, even just the uh, beginning when she's at the bar and then um, the the bartender asks her, like, is she drinking to remember or drinking to forget? And then she tells her, like, uh, giving the shit ain't going to give you a bigger tip. And that just that's just classic Jessica. If you've seen the first season, that's just very, 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 very classic. Uh, and just all throughout the whole trailer is just it's it's actually pretty good like it got me excited um the one of the things well i'm not even gonna get too into it because um as far as what i didn't like about the first season because that's basically what i'm just gonna compare it to but i could say just briefly because i am planning on doing a review on the first season spoiler and non-spoiler but one of the things that um i didn't like about the first season it was just well i ain't gonna say didn't like uh, it was just, it wasn't one of my favorite out of all the Netflix MCU shows. It it was kind of like a show that was good because I feel like anybody that's anybody, you don't have to be a fan of superhero, you know, the superhero genre to see this show and actually like it. You can be a person that just like detective shows and just, you know, just watch this show because it has really no supernatural type thing to it it doesn't have anything to do with aliens or nothing like that it's just a regular show and like her powers she is strong and stuff like that but her powers come secondary to what the story is she's just a detective a private eye trying to solve a case and all this stuff and that's basically what it is the only i guess you could say paranormal or supernatural type powers that's being used in there is like uh, what, what was it? I say tele, telepath. He like Kilgrave is a telepath. Uh, he basically can control people and make them do 
what he wants them to do. Think how they, how he wants them to think and all that stuff. So that's the only thing that's kind of like, I guess you could say supernatural about it. Or paranormal, however you want to look at it or classify it. But it's like really, it's just a regular show just with those two aspects. With her strength and his power. Other than that, it's like it's like any other show, you know. And so I feel like anybody else could like it. Uh, but this one seems like it's kind of like on the same path even though it has a lot of action scenes i'm still not being fooled like i can't help but to look at the trailer and just think that it's going to be the same thing but i don't know i probably could end up liking they probably could have a little bit more elements more fighting more whatever that make it better than the first season i don't know it could be way better than the first season it could be the same or it could be a little bit lackluster than the first season was so it, it is what it is um, but I am excited to see it. I will be checking it out. I don't know if I'm going to be heavy binge watching it like, oh, I got to watch this and just be sitting there watching it all night and all that stuff. I'm trying to get to it when I get to it. But other than that, you know, it's just, you know, I can't wait to see it. The good ass trailer. I really dug it. And that's just the way it is. That's the way the bird. I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that. But um, yeah, that ends the segment of uh, trailer reviews. And um, we're going to go ahead and get right into the box office. Now, if you're just checking in on this podcast, I do every week. If I do multiple podcasts, even if I just do one, I have a segment called the uh, just the box office results. Where I just talk about what came out this past weekend uh, and, you know, when like the order that it came out, you know, the top five or whatever the top five highest grossing uh, films of the weekend. And I talk about the films that's coming out this this coming weekend as well as I get my predictions on what movies will top the top five. And so with that, let's go ahead and get into it. Hold on. Wow. How did I get out of that? So, this past uh, week, this past weekend, I, I was off with my uh, predictions. I really was. I thought that I was, I thought I was, I thought I had it. I thought I did, but I didn't have it. And uh, it shows it because uh, top in the top, well, number one spot was 50 Shades, which I did get that. Fifty Shades, I did get that. Um, it's one of those movies where I may not be a fan of it. A lot of people may not be a fan of it, but it has an audience. It has people that love the books. They end up watching the movies and loving the movies or, you know, not love. I mean, whatever. But then you got people that just maybe never read the books but watch the movies and love the movies. I don't know. Whatever your taste is, I just knew that it was going to be a number one. I doubt it, it's not going to be a number one come this weekend. Uh, that's that's dead. <laughs> and one weekend where, you know, like, you know, it could eat, you know, it could survive, it could breathe. But nah, this coming the weekend is not going to last. But in any case, um, with a budget of $55 million, that is a awful lot for this movie. But uh, Fifty Shades Freed um, took in this number one at the box office with $38 million at its opening weekend. And then we got at number two, which I did get right. I believe I did. Yeah, I got right. Um, Peter Rabbit with the budget of fifty million. Um, I guess. Yeah, fifty million. I guess you know. And it took in with twenty five million at the number two spot. And then we got at number three, which this is what I got wrong because I thought this movie wasn't even gonna make it on the top five. And not only did it make it on the top five, it made it at number three. And uh, so yeah, it was a uh, fifteen seventeen to Paris with a budget of thirty million, and uh, it brought in twelve million. I don't, I'm not entirely sure if it's gonna make it back, but I mean, it made it in the top five, so I guess there's an audience to see this type of film. I'm not, I wasn't entirely sure that it was a lot of people gonna be just wanting to see this film, but I mean. Yeah, I mean, I guess it was. So, uh, and then at the number four spot, it was Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle, which is having long legs and staying up in the top five. This movie came out in December and it is February, the middle of February, and it is still kicking 
ass. Uh, with a budget of ninety million, it took in nine million this week, brings its domestic total to three hundred and sixty-five million, which brings its worldwide total to eight hundred and eighty-one million. That is nuts. Um, this was a movie. Uh, I think I said it on my last podcast that I didn't expect it to be good. I didn't expect it to really even make money, or you know, it just. Ah. But I ended up liking it ended up surprising me and it ended up really surprising a lot of people for just not not even just simply how much money it made but for how long it stayed at number one actually it it wasn't even at number one at first i think it was i don't know i think it went from number one to number two and then it went back to number one for weeks and then got back down to number two and all that stuff but then still is up in the top five and it brought in $881 million with this whole worldwide. That is crazy. And then rounding up the top five, you got The Greatest Showman with a budget of $84 million. And this week it brought in $6 million with its domestic total rounding up to $146 million. And its worldwide total rounding up to $314 million. That is crazy. And it, and it was just so crazy because the... um. The top five was just so different. Like, I don't know. Like, Winchester got knocked out. Maze Runner got knocked out. And what's crazy is that both of these films were above The Greatest Showman. And they both got knocked out the top five. So brought Jumanji right down to The Greatest Showman. And I'm like, that, that's just crazy how things work out. So I guess there is a wide, a really, really wide and big audience for The Greatest Showman to keep it in there as well as Jumanji. So just to see that, you know, them two is staying up in the top five. And these both are movies that dropped in December of last year. And it's still in the top five. That's crazy. So, I mean, I got, I think I got to make my way to go see The Greatest Showman. I don't know. I got I got to see it. I got to see what the hype is about, you know. Uh, but, I mean, I'm just, I'm just dumbfounded. So, yeah, like to recap, you got Fifty Shades Freed at number one. Peter Rabbit at number two. 15, 17 to Paris. Number three, number four is Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. And number five spot is The Greatest Showman. And, uh, yeah, that's just crazy. I don't know. Hopefully, my um, predictions for next week uh, is going to be, you know, good. Which I think it, I think it should. I don't think I'm going to be that far off. But um, moving on to coming this weekend uh, is three movies uh, that... I've already seen one. I am interested in seeing the other one. And the other one I am excited to go see. Uh, so we have Early Man. Early Man is a animation film in the style of Wallace and Gromit. If you guys heard of those movies or Chicken Run and stuff like that. Because I believe the same person that did those movies did this one. I'm not entirely sure. But it's done in the same style. And it's a, it's a kid's film, you know, it's, it's a movie for the kids and stuff like that. And they've been throwing out a few of them lately. Like, right now, I don't know if you can still catch it, you know, you got Paddington 2 up in the um, theaters, which is actually a surprise to me because that was I f- actually found that pretty enjoyable. Um, Peter Rabbit, I just saw that recently with my son, and that was, man, that was really enjoyable. And Early Man, it was, yeah, yeah. but this is a upcoming movie. Um... Just in the style of that. Uh, this one, I'm going I'm to wait to my movie review, which I should be dropping today um, and trying to get my eggs in order. So that's that's how it is. Uh, <laughs> but um, the next movie that's coming out this weekend is uh, Samson, which is a biblical story about just a guy who was who, who has power from God of like strength and stuff and with like some uh i believe it's some guidelines or something like that where he can't cut his hair or he can't do certain things because if he does then he loses his power and so it's uh i'm not entirely sure I, i'm not entirely uh, entirely noticeable noticeable uh okay knowledgeable of the uh, story of Samson, but it looks from the trailer pretty interesting. So I may end up checking it out when it comes out. I don't know. It's it's not. I'm not gonna be in too much of a hurry to go see this movie, but it looks like something that I'm would be willing to check out that I probably may end up liking. I don't know. 
but I mean, we'll see. And then the third movie that is coming out, the biggest movie that's coming out this weekend, just to really start off the year, is Black Panther. Now, this is a movie where I I'm really am. Ex I was just I'm just real excited to go see. This is a all black movie, and and like just to put it out there. Like, a lot of people might be looking at this, oh, this is the first black superhero, this and that. And it's not, like, don't think of it like that because it's not the black superhero to be put on screen. What have you want to think about it? You hear Blank Man, I don't, just whatever. These these are just throwback movies. Then you got Meteor Man uh, back in the day. And then also you got Blade. Blade, a lot of people, I don't know if a lot of people realize it now. I didn't even know when it first came out, but Blade is a Marvel character. So, in a sense, it, it, he is a superhero character. So, um, this really isn't the first one, but I get the significance as far as a black superhero movie. I mean, like, just full-on, you know, uh, going to Africa, the customs. Even though it's, it takes place in a fictional city of Wakanda, but it takes place in Africa. So, you have them African themes and stuff, and just... it. It looks good. It looks good. It looks like it's exciting. I'm hearing nothing but good things about it uh, coming from just Twitter and people who having reviews on it talking about a good uh, villain and everything about it. So that only heightens my excitement to go see this movie. And after this movie is over, it's not going to be that long before you know what come out. And that's that Infinity War, which is the, which is really kind of like the movie I'm definitely looking forward to this, this year. But, um, yeah, Black Panther, this is a movie I'm very excited for, especially with all the hype that's going behind it and everybody that hasn't seen this. So I definitely cannot wait to go see that. And so now that I gave you the three movies that are coming out this weekend, I'm gonna just go ahead and give you my box office predictions of what I think is going to happen come next come this time next week when the box office comes out. So at number one next week I think is gonna well I don't think I know it's gonna top the number one spot in the uh, top five box office is Black Panther without a shadow of a doubt is going to take the number one spot. Taking the number two spot is going to be 50 shades free um i believe that that because it is coming off the you know uh basically it's kind of like the i guess you could say valentine's day weekend a lot of females are going to be wanting to go see this movie they're gonna a lot of people a lot of females or whatever just people probably just didn't see it the first weekend because they're gonna wait to this weekend because they want to take the guy they want to go see this movie you know and it's coming up and then you know I, I feel like it's going to have some type of legs so it's definitely not gonna stay at number one i guarantee to you guarantee to you i will put a thousand dollars on it that it will not stay at number one but, uh, yeah, it's going to be at number two. Uh, number three is my pick. Uh, what well, Number three, my pick is uh, Early Man. Um, I don't know if a lot of people are going to take to this movie. It's just, it was a lot to, it was a lot to not like about this movie. It was some stuff to like, but it was just a lot to not like. Uh, this is not a movie. It wasn't bad. Don't get me wrong. I'm going to wait to my uh, review. Um, to actually like go deep and in depth into it, but yeah, I don't think that this is one of those movies that's really gonna catch a lot of people's eyes. So, um, number four is gonna be Peter Rabbit. I don't know. I mean, Peter Rabbit, I didn't enjoy. Maybe it could be swapped. Maybe I'm giving Early Man uh, the benefit of the doubt that you know it may end up you know doing good. It may end up being at number four, and Peter Rabbit might be at number three. Who knows? But in any case, um, number five is going to be 1517 to Paris. And um, I think that's just going to round it up because I don't know. Maybe Jumanji may end up outlasting uh, 1517 to Paris. Maybe. I don't know. It has legs to this long. Maybe it's going to basically keep thriving at least for one more week but yeah those are my predictions 
Number one, Black Panther. Number two, Fifty Shades Free. Number three, Early Man. Number four, Peter Rabbit. And number five, 1517 to Paris. Those are my picks for the next, for this, well, this weekend's box office. And I hope I got it right. Out of all the times that I've done this throughout this uh, podcast, I think I only got one or two of them right. So, yeah. Yay me. And um, with that said, that wraps up this edition of the Take One Podcast. And I'd like to thank you guys for listening. And, you know, just, you know, if you have not, have not subscribed to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And um, go ahead and hit that like button as well. You can share this, let people know that I do do podcasts and all that stuff. If you like it and all that stuff. And well as turning your notifications. That way you'll be notified for anything that drops on my channel. And um, I will be putting up new um, content. I know I haven't been here in a while. But you know I'm back. And I'm better than ever. I guess you could say. Yeah I'm back and I'm better than ever. But uh, yeah and that's it. And I probably, I'm going to try to have more podcasts out this week. More Take One podcasts out this week. Because there's a lot of content that I kind of want to put out on it. And um, yeah, that's it. That's all I really got to say. Everything else in the, uh, com- in, the com- in the description below with all my social media and everything else. And uh, I will catch you guys on the next one. Peace.